Hi, everyone. Welcome to our season one wrap up. We're super excited to have this first season done and we're happy you joined us. We look forward to bringing you an even better second season and hope you'll stay along for the ride and keep listening. We're thrilled to be joining this little wrap up with our interview with Sage Brocklebank. So we're going to do about a 10, 15 minute wrap up here, just going over some statistics and some information about season one. And then we will go ahead right into the interview with Sage. So stick around. Matt, what information do you have for us first? So we started doing our you know polls for each episode that released our pineapple rating system. And the last two episodes got a bunch of reviews and, and ratings. So I wanted to go over that. So starting with episode 14, uh, that is Poker. I barely know her. And that one, we got a total of 111. And uh, that's 111 total reviews. And we also got 10 of those as five pineapple ratings. And 77 of those were three pineapple ratings. Um, I believe for mine, that was also a three pineapple for me. And I think it was a pineapple, uh, four pineapple for Barb. Yep. So uh, that was really exciting to get a ton of uh, reviews on that. And episode 15, we got 179. Really wow. bummed we didn't get just one more to get that nice <laughs> rounded number in there. But, you know, Monk. whatever, not bitter. <laughs> for the three pineapple rating, we got 78 in total. That was the most. And then out of that, um, 179, 27 of those were five pineapple ratings, which was. <laughs> Not necessarily surprising. It was a good episode. I mean, even myself, I was tweedling between like uh, three pineapples and four, but a lot of people gave it five. So now, d- interestingly enough, I remember with Matthew kind of arguing with me in that episode about my four pineapple rating. That's interesting that many people agreed that it was a really good episode. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, technically, for that episode, 51 people agreed that. It yeah. was four pineapples. Yeah. So it's not just me. Well, hey, I thought it was good. Uh-huh. I thought it was good. Like I said, I was thinking about doing a four star. I honestly, if I went back, I might give it a four star thinking about it retrospect. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I gave it a three at the time. And, uh, but I was thinking, I don't know, five pineapples? I mean, I don't know if that's up on the tier. In my opinion, for five pineapples, so one for thing sure, that we solid argument. Okay, so five? one thing that we have to consider though here is that maybe, just maybe, there are people who are just watching it for the first time and they have yet to see season two. That, or I thought you were going to be sarcastic, six. but that is actually a very valid point. It is a so valid for point. New like people th- watching who yeah. don't. Are, are I basing would've... it off of other ones. This this actually was one of the better episodes of the entire first season. Exactly. There's lots of cool stuff in it. So you know what? That is a valid point. And well, I'm, I'm going to let it go. <laughs> all right. I think that's wise. I think that's wise. Um... Um, but uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, that was some of our user reviews. Okay. Now, um, we went back retroactively and gave radians after we created the pineapple system. Mm-hmm. And so we have radians for every episode of season one. Um, so I added ours up and I did the math on it and my ratings averaged out to 2.73 as the average, uh, 2.73 pineapples Mm -hmm. and Barb's averaged out to 3.07, which I found Mm -hmm. interesting. Although I guess I kind of, I, I expected it. She's a little more generous with them. Um, the lowest ratings that I had. So my my one pineapples I gave to episode one, which was the pilot, and episode four, which was women seeking dead husband, smokers okay, no pets. Those were my one pineapple ratings for season one. And my highest ratings was four pineapples. I didn't give out any fives. And it was only for one episode, episode 10 from Earth to Starbucks. So mm-hmm. um, that was mine uh, barb what was your lowest and highest ratings so my lowest was also episode four women seeking dead husband mm-hmm. and my highest was a four-way tie between episode nine forget me not episode 10 from earth to starbucks episode 11 he loves me he loves me not he loves me oops he's dead 
and episode 15, Scary Sherry, Bianca's Toast. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. So out of a total of 75 pineapples to be awarded for seasons one, for just season one, Matthew gave out 40 and I gave out 43. Which kind of surprised me. I definitely thought there'd be a bigger number because you gave out a lot more fours, but you also mm-hmm. gave out more twos. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of three pineapples, so it kind of balanced out in that way. But um, yeah. Well, there were definitely episodes this season that you liked more than me, like the Warriors episode and stuff like that. I, d- I don't, eh, you know. Yeah. So I think in the back of my mind, I'm just like dying for season two. So, yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what were your favorites? We're going to do favorites here based on episode and then favorite scenes and then favorite bits. So, yeah. Yeah. So, we just kind of varied it up based on what we kept talking about. Yeah. So, what up. were your favorite episodes, Matt? Favorite episodes are going to actually kind of reflect with the reviews um, from mm-hmm. Earth to Starbucks, episode 10. Um, I actually really liked episode 12, Cloudy with a Chance of Murder. Um, I wasn't in that one. That was the one that I had to take off for and Wendy was here for. Mm -hmm. And I actually forgot how much I liked it. But when I went in and was editing and I was listening to it, I actually went back and watched it afterwards because you guys brought up all these really like funny points and stuff that I forgot. And when I watched it, I liked it. And I liked the remake that they did later on. But even this one, I thought was really good. So uh, that's another one that I might have given four stars at the time um, or four pineapples at the time if I had you know, did the podcast with you guys. Um, let's see here. I also had Scary Sherry Bianca's Toast as my favorite, as one of my favorites for season one. Okay. Uh, um, my favorites, and I'm going to kind of put mine in order. Okay? okay. So my very, very favorite was From Earth to Starbucks. My second was Forget Me Not, episode nine. Uh, third was episode 11. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. Oops. He's dead. And then fourth was episode 15. Scary Sherry Bianca's toast. Okay. All right. What about scenes, Matt? What, what scenes did you like? All right. So I did have a couple that I, I a hundred percent remember. These are like five star scenes for me that I always, that I (laughs) I just remember without looking up and doing any research, like back research was episode 11 when Gus is in the tanning. Uh, building and he is the distraction while Sean like runs in the back and is like snooping around and he has this really weird interaction with the tanning guy telling him that he wants a tan that was a really funny interaction I watched that at least two or three times and they, just the way that he do- goes along just like oh yeah yeah like uh, nothing's weird and then he drops it he's like I can't do this and then he just asks the guy <laughs> the guy is so relieved that he doesn't have to be part of that anymore that he just tells mm-hmm. him what he wants um, I really like that one uh, episode 13 was when um, it's the tennis one I think it's game set murder mm-hmm. and it's when Gus is pretending to play dead as the victim inside the victim's apartment and the landlord comes in and Sean is like, Oh, you've seen too much. Oh, we're in this together. We got to like cut up the body. We got to throw, is there, is there an oven here or like a furnace? And the guy just goes along with it. And then Gus is like, again, he's like, I can't do this. (laughs) And then he just gets up and walks out and the guy freaks out. And my last one for favorite bit was actually in episode 15 was when um, they were in the, sororities mansion and then the scary stuff happened and they ran out screaming to gus's car and they were like freaking out as gus was trying to open the door uh those were definitely the most memorable favorite um scenes from season one i love those Those were great all very good ones i have some different ones (laughs) So well, that's good. My, <laughs> okay. So my favorite scenes, um, one of them was from the speed dating episode, and it was at this episode eleven, by the way, and it's when you know Sean and Jules have sort of gone through the whole speeding speed dating thing, and their test questions matched up, and and all of that, and at the end they're actually talking about it. And I, I, as heartbreaking as it was, it was also a really great scene because it, they sort of acknowledged in that moment that they do have a thing for each other. They, it was acknowledged 
So All right, I did so like your that. standards for favorite scenes are very different than mine. <laughs> well, no, I have but some, yes, I have I'll some agree. that are like what you're talking about. But to okay. me, that was like a really good scene because it was so, um, no, it's I agree. a little I bit foreshadowing. It. You know what I mean? Like you, see you see, appeal. yeah, I, I like that scene. Um, so it, it was a bittersweet scene. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So then my next favorite scene was, <laughs> I can't even. Um, so it was from Earth to Starbucks when Gus pulls up in the car to the parking lot and he's like zigzagging and trying not to be oh, noticed. He's a jackal and mode. he's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stealthy like a jackal, and he's like running through, like to hide behind things. That was a really funny scene to me. And I remember, I, yeah, you, you liked that one a lot when it happened. Like I can't, uh, I can't stop laughing when I think about it. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> this one was also excellent from the. Um, this was also from the episode eleven from the speed dating episode <laughs> when. <laughs> You okay? Yeah, I'm good. So when <laughs> when Lassie's behind the the um two way mirror and Sean and Gus are in the interview room with the naked guy and he throws himself at, oh. at the window and asks if they want to inspect him okay. for any like <laughs> I could see that. Because then everybody freaks I out. I could not stop laughing at that I mean, like <laughs> Lassiter's face when that happened and like he didn't know what to do it scared him to death and this guy was so serious like he thought he had really been abducted and he just threw himself at that window mm -hmm. <laughs> no. yeah the no. noises they make I can still hear them well in episode 10 we get the have you heard about Pluto line and yes. I mean I think that's I mean, I might be wrong. I might be misremembering, but I'm pretty sure that's one of the few like bits that actually got started in season one. Mm -hmm. I don't. Think no, you're not wrong. That many. You're not. You're not wrong. Um, the only addition that I have to that is just the pineapples. It, I don't know if it's technically a bit, but it was certainly started off in season one, and it starts mm -hmm. off strong in season two, as we're gonna well, find out next week. So. In episode 15, they did start the, well, I, th I think we actually talked about it in the episode, where, like, somebody gives a very obscure and strange way of describing Lassiter. Uh, that is something that happens oh. often, like a nickname or some description of Lassiter that's very strange. Uh, so, that does happen. I think that's about it, though. I mean, I don't yeah. think there's a ton of them. But yeah, so yeah, that's what I could, uh, that, that's what came to mind. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. Now, when we did have, uh, before we finish up, we did have uh, a user email in particular that I wanted to uh, read and give a shout out to on air. Uh, and and from... actually, thank you also to everyone who took the time to write in this season. It, we've had Yeah, we did get a bunch a few. of comments and emails, mm -hmm. um, especially when we got up on Reddit. Yeah, we're on Reddit now. Uh, the Psych Podcast is the... The, the user and uh, there is a psych forum on there it's just the subreddit is just psych um and we post in there as well and we had uh, a so, couple on yeah. our on our email from glenn and connie and a couple of other people so shout out to you guys too thanks for sending those in yes yeah and um uh, you know they they mentioned some stuff some questions about you know future mm -hmm. episodes too and we'll bring those up then as well but uh this one is from chris from buck county pennsylvania uh thank you for messaging in um this is hers it's <laughs> <clears throat> I'm really enjoying your podcast. I'm two episodes behind. Since I'm closer to Barbara's age, I usually relate more with Barb's references than Matthew's, but I do enjoy Matthew's younger perspective. Yeah, younger. You heard that? Mm -hmm. wow. um, I'm fairly new to Psych. <laughs> Just discovered it uh, this summer, and I know that's hard to believe. Uh, I had to email about dual spires. Barb. Oh. Gotta respectfully disagree with you on this one. If you're a Twin Peaks fan, this is loaded with so many references, musical pieces, and actors from the original show. It's such a great homage to the original show. I'm guessing you are not a Twin Peaks fan, but mm -hmm. Psych really nailed it with the episode. She's going to give it, preemptively, 
four pineapples only because last night Gus is the five pineapple bar that is very hard to reach. I agree. Uh, so again, thank you for sending in. If you have any more questions, definitely let us know. Um, but I have to uh, definitely agree with that last statement. Is late night Gus is one of those five last, pineapple last, episodes. Last night Gus. Uh, last, last night, night Gus. Sorry, yeah, uh, is one of those five pineapple episodes. A hundred percent. Although I would also, I, I I'm definitely going to give Dual Spires a five. I'm almost certain. I um, can I can tell you with one hundred percent confidence that I will not be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, know, I will not but, be. You know. and really, I, and as I love your email, Chris, thank you for that. But um, I was not a Twin Peaks fan. I think it sort of borders on kind of sci-fi with me. But and we'll obviously talk about this a little bit in yeah. more depth when we get to that episode. But um, but yeah, I just I don't know. And I have to sum it up maybe, though. You're saying you're wrong. <laughs> well, maybe. I will um, feel a little differently when I go through it because I I do notice that as we've gone through a couple of these episodes, I have felt a little bit different about them when we're looking at them the way them we're looking at them. Is right. A so than just watching them. So yeah. So mm-hmm. maybe there'll be something there, and maybe I'll maybe have you'll to like see watch the an episode. Well, maybe and I'll the have genius to genius of the comedy in that episode. Now that you're like really focusing on it, um, you know, maybe that's okay. what will happen. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe I'll have to watch an episode of Twin Peaks or something so that I can sort of see. I the don't parallel. know if that would necessarily help. I tried watching P- Twin Peaks after I saw that, and I was not as interested in that. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's much of a comedy based on the first episode that I saw. Hmm. But uh, well, I we'll, did notice we'll all the reference, even if though I hadn't really seen the show. Mm-hmm. I did notice, I'm like, oh, that's a reference to something. Oh, that's a reference to something. That's probably an actor from the show. Like, I, th- mm-hmm. I there's several times that I could, that I was guessing it just based off of how, like, funny or clever the bit was. Yeah. I'm like, that's super unique. That's probably from Twin Peaks. So... Well, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at it when we get there. But thank you for sending that in, Chris. That's awesome. We yep. love we love the communication, and we love that you're enjoying the podcast. And now, I don't know unless you have anything else to add, Matt. I think we should treat these listeners to this interview that we did with Sage Brocklebank because it yep. was amazing. I had I, I I gotta tell you, I was super excited about it. I was very nervous about it, but I was super excited at the same time. And I've mm-hmm. listened to the whole thing at least three times now, just through editing it and like going back and double checking things and mm-hmm. verifying it. And I get super excited every time yeah. just because he was such a nice guy. He he really is this really nice and like a really inspiring guy. And we had such a good time. As soon as we started yeah. talking, I lost all sense of um, like nervousness. Yeah, um, so, absolutely. And he answered. He gave us so many he, cool answers. The, he answered. So that many was questions. what I was gonna say. This is like it's a cool interview because it, we asked. Well, we did ask some questions about him and about other things that he's done as well. So it's not all about psych. The majority is about psych, but there are some Mostly other elements psych, too. But we did go um, off a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but it was so great to just find out a little bit more about him. And he gives some great, great insider like information about how things came about. And we just, we, we had just such a wonderful time interviewing him. He was, he was really fun. So I hope you guys inter- enjoy the interview as well. And I mean, here we go. So yeah, there's an intro for that starting right now. Hello, Psych fans. We are so excited to tell you that we have an awesome guest on today's season one bonus episode of the show. We are interviewing Sage Brocklebank, a.k.a. Buzz McNabb. You may also have seen him in roles in Once Upon a Time, Supernatural, or a series of unfortunate events on Netflix. It was really awesome of him to take time out of his schedule to talk with us, and it was so much fun. We hope you all enjoy listening as much as we enjoyed talking with him. Here we go. We have with us today Sage Brocklebank. He is the actor who portrays McNabb on our favorite show, and Mm -hmm. uh, we got him for a little bit. We're going to ask him a few questions. Thank you for uh, sitting down with us and doing the show. We're really yes, excited. Thank you. And hopefully our fans will really enjoy it as well. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I'm sorry I was so abominably late, but I'm glad we're doing it. Uh, not a problem have, at all. We have no other plans. We're good. We're good. <laughs> 
Um, so we're going to start off with some just general questions here. I I read that you founded a membership a mentorship program in Vancouver for young actors called Fulfilling Young Artists. Can you tell us a little bit about that and also maybe let us know how old you were when you started acting and how you got into it? Yeah, 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 sure. Um, so I was doing a course in, uh, in this organization called Landmark Education, and it was a course about um, uh, self-expression and leadership. And in the course, you were tasked with creating uh, either an event or an organization that could benefit your community. And I, um, I'd always felt like I wanted to go back in time and talk to myself when I was a young actor. And um, so I'm from, from Vancouver, BC, or Langley, which is a suburb of Vancouver. And, and I'd gone to theater school at Circle and the Square in New York. And then after three years of being in the States, they kicked me out and sent me back to Canada. And then I was stumbling through being an actor for my most of my early 20s. And um, a lot of the advice that I'd gotten from these wonderful teachers was kind of in the background, but it didn't really necessarily feel as real at that point. Um, because I didn't have anyone in my life that was actively pursuing the field that was older than me that could give me that kind of mentorship I desired. Mm -hmm. And um, so I guess at the age of around 30 or 32 or there, I created this this program. And then my good friend Patrick Zabonke came on board and helped me kind of sculpt it. And our um, our thesis for the program was that uh, it wasn't about getting the job or making money, that it was the program is about finding fulfillment, whatever that means to you as an artist. And um, And I think that's something that has value for you no matter what you do in life, oh, you know, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so I think, um, we were trying to, you know, make a difference for young actors, uh, knowing that many of them would not end up being actors down the road, mm -hmm. but that the, the, the tools that we were giving them would be transferable to whatever they ended up doing. Um, and so, so that's kind of what got me into that program. And it, it ran for about 10 or 11 years. We haven't done it in a, oh. A year or two. We're hoping that it'll have another iteration. Patrick's moving to New York City to run the uh, the BFA program at Brooklyn College, and uh, I've I've kind of I'm in other ventures at the moment. But um, so that's what that program's mm -hmm. about. And then um, I didn't really start professionally acting until I was around twenty or twenty one. But I was doing a play when I was eight years old, and my friend's brother said I was the only one he could hear. And I think that was the type of validation that I needed to keep me in this business. Yeah. <laughs> well, or at least, it, yeah, huh? or at least make you um, yeah. want to do it more. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When you yeah. got into it when you were 21, was it something, was it your goal or did someone like offer you a job and you just took it and then you just kind of kept doing it? Like, was it something you uh, set out to do? No, I was pretty clear that it was what I wanted to do in high school. And I, I transferred to um, Langley Fine Arts School, which is this, um, it was at the time, I think, the number one art school in, in Canada. And uh, a lot of alternative kind of hippie arts kids were there. And so I switched there when, in 11th grade and I was there for 11th and 12th grade. And then I was taking acting classes in, in Vancouver. And then at the age of 20, I moved to New York by myself and spent three years there. Um, so I was pretty clear that that's like what I wanted to do. Um, and uh, but I didn't really, you know, make much money at it or make a living until maybe my late 20s. I think mm -hmm. it's a bit of a grind being an actor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's where yeah. I think that your your uh, previous venture or fulfilling your artist comes into play, because, I mean, if you with something that has a lot of rejection like that, if you don't know what, if that's what fulfills you is getting that and you're just constantly getting rejected, that could be a problem. So I could definitely see how that specifically is a good venture to get into with uh, helping people. So yeah. Well, yeah. It, could also, it could also be bad if you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And it's well, that you, difficult, you know? You, you, I mean, it's hard to last. I think if you're doing it for the quote unquote, you know, wrong reasons, mm -hmm. uh, Unless you're just really lucky and you book some crazy amounts of jobs. Uh, did you have what you thought would be like your dream role? Um, I mean, I know that you've taken, you have lots of different, you know, you, you've been in tons of different things. Um, mm -hmm. have, is there something that you really, like a certain type of 
person you wanted to portray, a certain job, anything like that that's like a dream role for you? Uh, I mean, when when I got into it, I liked, you know, romantic comedy stuff and goofy characters. And I guess I've I've played a fair amount of them. Now I'm more interested in playing bad guys. I find bad guys really interesting. There's more latitude and room to be creative with bad guys. Um, mm-hmm, definitely and, when they're written well, too. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, um, but I don't know. There's. I always wanted to play Silvio in Midsummer Night's Dream. I don't think I ever played that character, but you never know. Maybe. <laughs> very, uh, um, I don't, yeah, I, I think it's the experience uh, in particular of doing theater and being on stage and feeling like uh, I'm inciting change. That's really exciting. Like when someone sees a play and they identify with some part of their humanity through something in the play, like, oh, my God, that's like me and my brother or my mom or my dad. Mm-hmm. Or That's when I think art is exciting. That's when. You know, because you actually have the, the the opportunity for people to see themselves and have an awareness and maybe change their behavior in the future, um, which I think is is pretty amazing. Um, so I'm still interested in that. I don't know what roles, but very much still interested in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just know, like, if I was thinking about acting, like, there's definitely certain things that I would love to try out or, or do and uh, like action scenes, that kind of stuff. And. You you've had some of those in psych. We have psych questions that we're going to get into later, um, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, we're we'll get to that later. Uh, Barb, oh. do you have one? So uh, we saw on here, and you kind of mentioned it before about Pineapple Con. Is yeah. that something that you're still going to maybe try and do? I know there's a lot going on right now, but maybe that you would try to do in the future. We hope. We hope. We hope. <laughs> I think I think it's going to happen. I really do. Um, it um it kind of got got um shunned by by the powers that be that are uh higher up the food chain than than me and um and the idea for the convention was that it was going to be um because i'm interested in in value and i'm interested in getting bang for the buck when as a mm-hmm. consumer and so yeah. and, and i'm interested in doing things differently than they've been done and so uh i've done a few cons and as an actor and i've been to them and um for the for the most part i i just don't see the value as a consumer i feel like as a consumer you go and you pay an exorbitant amount of money to stand in line and be there with this actor that you revere for maybe 15 seconds 30 Mm -hmm. seconds and you get that image of it and you hope that in the image they were actually smiling and that you didn't blink or you know Mm -hmm. whatever it is but it uh and, I, and so I've gone to them and I've seen it. And then there's also the panels and the different things that happen. And I thought like, wow, this is like an arena where there's people spending all this money on this, but they're, they're not getting that much bang for the buck. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, what would be interesting? What would be kind of cool? And um, so we had this idea that we would do a, a roaming tour of psych locations where you would get to go and, um, but there would be, I don't want to give away too much here, but uh, essentially the Comic-Con or the con would have a crime that would occur and the psychos that attend the con, they could just go to the regular hotel and there would be the photos and there would be the panels and there would be that. Mm-hmm. But there would also be a component of it on tour buses going to different locations in different locations, you might meet different characters and there might be a crime that you could potentially solve. And so there was this interactive thing going on. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Please do that. That that does sound like fun. (laughs) Having the interactive element definitely is different. I've only been to one kind of con before and I I definitely see what you're saying there. Um, Honestly, the thing that I thought was the coolest part was being in this room with like, 15,000 people that all like love this one thing. And yeah, I can't right. imagine that with something like psycho, like with psychos, like that would be so crazy. There'd be so many pineapple, pineapple pizza deliveries that day. It'd be insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and, Such a I, good I, idea. 
that is like for sure that's a huge part of the value of those conventions is is mm-hmm. getting all the other people that love this thing that you love and um from all over the world and you get to congregate and talk about this thing that that is a huge part of it as well um so i mean obviously right now we're in a, a different time where uh you know people yeah. aren't going in big numbers and all that and so i uh, it wouldn't happen in the next year or two but I think maybe three or four years out, there's a, a chance that because um, uh, I'm involved in other business ventures. And as mm-hmm. I do more business, I, you know, get more capital and more ability to, like, mm-hmm. get leveraging and banks and all that stuff. So there's a chance I could I could pull this off in, in three or four years. And now yeah. is uh, is like peacock involved at all or are are the people with psych interested in doing it um like anybody Um, there were there there was some people that were very interested and some people that had concerns i can't really (laughs) say much more than that i got you you. uh, um but they weren't opposed to doing something psych related they weren't opposed to doing something psych related their idea and my idea were not the same idea and um so i'm kind of like I'm not interested in doing another, a regular convention. I mean, they might be, and there's people that might want to do that, but I don't, it it doesn't, doesn't stimulate me artistically. And, uh, um, but I, I am interested in doing something different that's interactive that has this huge component because I think it's interesting and I think it's a, a worthwhile venture to invest six months or a year of my life planning. And, um, Mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously it would be a convention that you do to make money as well. That Mm -hmm. would be a component of it. The prime driver would be like, could we do something totally different and could we have all of these people and, you know, the component of having like seven tour buses going on these roaming tours to different locations. It, there's a, it's like making a movie essentially. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that is very challenging and exciting. So I'm excited about that, uh, that p- potential. Yeah. I think that um, sounds awesome. In those, in those talks, was the rest of the, the cast interested? Like, what, or did it not get that far to where you actually like, talked ah, about yeah, it? Yeah, pretty or? well everyone in the cast was in. Okay, yeah, they all yeah. seem to be, you know, they're, they're, fans yeah. of the, the following, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, their oh, game. Awesome. I, I think it'll happen. I, I, I really think it'll happen. It's just one of those things. Sometimes you just got to keep on tapping and knocking on the door, and then eventually the door opens. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm glad it's um, still alive, because I, I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lots of people would be interested in it. I, I, I don't know how big that number is, but I, I know there's lots of people out there that love the show. And mm-hmm. especially for something unique like that, that's more of an experience than just mm-hmm. a regular con. So mm-hmm. mm, definitely keep that alive. Yeah. I like that. I will. I will. Like yeah. someone's, <laughs> fighting, someone's fighting for us. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All so... right. So you've. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. So we'll move on to some psych questions now. Okay. Next. All right. Here we go. So how exactly did you get the role in the pilot? Um, was there anything special or memorable about the audition experience? Uh, I have heard a story that you were the guy who raised his hand in the jail scene. And yeah. that was like a loved thing. Um, was there any, like, we're very interested. We've seen the show over and over again. Um mm-hmm. I mean, we've been watching it from the beginning and just over and over. So we're interested in any like behind the scenes things you had, any just interesting tidbits that the general public might not know. Um, like uh, what type of like maybe what was on the call sheet for this type of character? What was it described? Um, like what was well, it Matthew has as? made that question really broad. So oh, maybe sorry. start <laughs> with like he's 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 taking. The- I'm very some other questions that will relate to that, but so maybe just start by telling us <laughs> about how you got the role and if there was anything really specific about that 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 you remember. Yeah, well, I mean, so it wasn't. It was a character called Dancing Cop. It wasn't Buzz McNabb. It was called Dancing Cop, mm-hmm. and I remember I was going in for an audition at. Uh, he's retired now, but his name's Stuart Akins, this casting director in in vancouver and um and when i went in for the show um it was the middle of the summer i remember wearing flip-flops and it was like boiling hot and uh and it was like two lines three lines it wasn't you know you you know and it was a pilot for a tv show and i think it had the name but in 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 an actor's career you know in 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 uh 
I guess you'd call me like a journeyman actor in Vancouver. These things happen all the time. And most of the time you don't get the part. And then even when you do get the part and they say like, oh, we'll bring you back. Most of the time they don't. That's just how it goes. Right. So so I had this audition and I went in. And I said one of the lines and then I put up my hand, I guess. And then I, you know, and then that was it. And then I got the call like a month or two later and they said, oh, I got this part in this thing. And I was like, okay. And, um, and I had just gotten into my career as a professional poker player. And, um, and so we shot on the Friday and, uh, later on we shot all this stuff in a studio, but at this time we were shooting at the Jericho youth hostel, which I just drove by the other day and it's now called something else. But it's near Jericho mm-hmm. Beach, yeah, and it's uh, it's uh, so it's down by the water in Vancouver, and it has like vaguely Spanish architecture because there's like none mm-hmm. in Vancouver. Like we've, they've milked all five buildings in Vancouver twenty <laughs> times over because Santa Barbara is like you know very Spanish right. architecture, and um, so we were down there, and it was like October, and uh, Michael Engler was directing, and he's the guy who did Six Feet Under, and mm-hmm. uh, and he was great. And but it was like this, you know, it's a pilot. So there's all this attention on how things were going to be set. And, the, you know, we'd be shooting and then they would stop. And then there'd be like a conference call with L.A. to see what color shirt James should wear. And then nothing happens for 40 minutes. And I get you know, these people in Los Angeles are deciding if it's going to be the green or the purple or the whatever, you know, like there's a, all of this kind wow. of stuff going on. And um, and I went and I did that scene and I didn't put up my hand. And then like uh, Kelly Kolchak. I think, yeah, Kelly Kolchuk, who's one of the executive producers in the show, was there. She's like, no, he, he has to put up his hand. He put up his hand in the audition. He's got to put up his hand. And I was like, oh, yeah, OK, I'll put up my hand. So so then I put up my hands and uh, and then that, you know, made it as part of the thing. And then while we were shooting, they were going through the props. And James is like, oh, we should give him this name tag. And it said McNabb on it. So that's mm-hmm. how I got the McNabb name tag. And then the buzz, I don't think, happened in the pilot. I think the buzz happened later on, midway mm-hmm. season one. I think it was James that gave me the first name buzz as well. That's um, crazy. Like, they no. didn't even have the name for the character. So but, cool. and... but, but there was no character. That's what you have to comprehend. Like, it, it, that's so crazy. It, yeah. Most of the time, mm-hmm. you know, they're just making it up. That's mm-hmm. show business, right? They're just, you know, because you know. I could be... If I was terrible, that would be it. I wouldn't okay. appear. Like there was a different woman playing. Uh, yes, Maggie's his partner. Role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lass's yeah. partner. Although we were yeah. curious about that. It, on on a, as a side question, um, yeah. I don't know if you'll know the answer to this one or not. But uh, was that supposed to be the same character? Like, because we yes. know that she left because they were having like an affair, kind of, and then Maggie comes in. Was I don't, I don't know if uh, if that was how it was supposed to be, or if they made a brand new character for Maggie because she left. That's what I think happened. Oh, okay, all right. So, yeah. All right, yeah. so Maggie's so character was... wasn't even Juliet wasn't even supposed to be in there then, probably. No, so that woman would have been a regular wow. character on the show, oh. but then um, I guess. This is above my pay grade, but I guess it didn't go well on set, and they were like, "No, we're not a fan. We'll get someone else." Which yeah, I read somewhere. Like, yeah, yeah, we read yeah. somewhere that they didn't like how it made Lasseter look like, you know, still being married and uh, or being separated. Um, I don't know how true mm-hmm. that is, but that that's some stuff we did in the first episode research. But mm-hmm. that's crazy. I, mm. Yeah, I have to say, I'm glad they made the change. I know, but you know, Juliet. I mean, nothing against that that actress, but like, <sighs> I don't feel like the chemistry was as good with everybody on that on that episode. Um, I don't no. know. Maggie was good with that. That's a different show. Like, yeah. that's completely yeah. different. Yeah. Oh, it's wow. totally different, and and it would be. I mean, and it's impossible for any of us to really know because had that actress continued she would have settled in and gotten relaxed and she would be totally different than she would have been in the pilot. And it, uh, and it just, it's a different direction, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. the whole thing would be different than, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like the time. trajectory yeah. of it though, would have definitely been different because Lassie was in a relationship with her, which, mm-hmm. and, and then Sean ends up with Jules. So like that couldn't have happened if, 
You know what I mean? Like it just changed. It really changed. That's interesting. Um, when did you? Then that, by the That's way, so is exactly cool what we were looking for. The name, <laughs> like you didn't even have yeah. the name. They gave you. No. They just picked a random one and gave it to you. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah, out of the little like props, right? They had like a bunch of names. It's like yeah, make nap. Yeah, yeah, see, those are the details yeah. that yeah. I love because it's such a weird yeah. little fact. I love that stuff. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It happens um, more often than you would think in this business. More probably. Often. I know nothing yeah. about acting or being on set or any of that. So, yeah. Mm. Mm. Very cool. Um, When did you find out, like, how long was it before they said to you, you're going to come back? We're going to keep this character. Oh, I mean, th they said it. I think I was on set for two or three days during the pilot mm -hmm. and they said, if we go, you're in. Oh, and, good. Uh, and I was like, sure. <laughs> like, will this I even get like, picked well, up? Yeah. yeah. Because like, they always say that they mm -hmm. do. I know. I mean, I'm 43 now, so I'm far more of a cynic than I was then. But um, <laughs> I had, uh, so I shot on the Friday and I shot on the Monday. And I remember on the Friday, I was talking to a guy on set who was a PA that played poker. And I was like, hey, man, playing this really big poker game. Da, 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 da. And then on Saturday, I won, I think it was $42,000 in a game of cards. Oh so I was like, just feeling rich. Most <laughs> of my life, I've made like maybe $12,000 a year, right? Like my yearly income was like 12000 And I was oh, wow. new into this poker career. And I had this crazy win. The, later on, I had crazy mm -hmm. losses. But this was like a crazy win. And I went and bought like an almost new Audi. And like, like, so when I went back to the TV show, I was like just floating on air because I had this big <laughs> victory. And I was like, and they're like, if we go, you're in. I'm like, sure, whatever. I'm rich from poker. I was like, you know, like I just didn't really <laughs> consider any of these things. And then um, maybe four or five months or however long, I got a phone call said, hey, that show's back. And they, they want to have you on the show for a few days or, you know, and then. And then began the the saga of being on on psych. And every year, you know, there'd be a phone call and like, hey, we're thinking like, you know, maybe seven or eight days or um so it was cool. Yeah, it's a pretty yeah. remarkable experience for sure. Yeah. So in that same I guess uh area then, they probably didn't have the whole since he wasn't supposed to be a full time character, they probably didn't have the whole character designed then like his like yeah. uh i don't know gentleness or like naivety like th like that was all later yeah i think it's kind of a dance right mm -hmm. like there's an archetype that gets written and gets composed for certain characters and so in usually in in television or film they have like a, a line b line c line and mm -hmm. um i'd be like a b or a c line character uh and it's kind of, you know, they have an idea of what it is and then it's kind of like whatever you bring to the party. And if you bring a lot to the party and you're dancing away and they're like, oh, okay, oh, this guy's kind of interesting. He's kind of this way. Let's let's keep on going in this vein. He's, he's got this kind of naive gullible thing going on. Let's 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 write into that. Let's, you know, uh, and then they would, you know, talk about Francie or something. And I always thought that um, I'm not religious at all, but I always thought that Buzz was a Mormon. Mm -hmm. I, I always felt like Buzz was okay. for sure a Mormon, and um, I could I have that. some yeah. yeah, I have some Mormon friends, and they're just so pure and honest, mm -hmm. and um, kind of simple, but just like really transparently pure, and and uh, you know, just straight shooters, and not mm -hmm. a not a bad bone in their body, and I thought like that was kind of who Buzz was, like you know. Which is the funny thing of him becoming a detective because you're like, does he have enough edge to be right. a detective? You know, can he go that far? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think he just needed to believe in himself. But I, well, it's, it's, a, it's a favorite character. Like, we really like this character. Um, and that was actually one of our questions is, was that, I, I mean, I do have, I have a couple of buzz scenes that are just my favorite. I loved in zero to murder in 60 seconds when you pulled over the blueberry after it got like pimped out when when they had all the stuff done to the car and you pulled mm -hmm. them over i that cracked me up and i also loved um in the episode where you got like blown up into the pool oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay so 
how how was that like what was that um a fun scene to film or did you do it or what happened well so um my buddy dan Payne, who's a pretty prolific actor in vancouver and has uh you know done all sorts of stuff but he also does uh some gigs to to pay the bill sometimes uh he was the guy who flew into the pool he was the stunt double who did that um and then when when we shot that scene uh my friend patrick also had like a one-liner as a cop saying something to me before i got blown up which is very funny because he ended up doing like two or three episodes of psych Mm -hmm. later on um but we shot that scene they did the episode and then i guess when they screened it they thought it looks like maybe buzz is dead like I think we need another scene with him, and then I think there was talk of like, no, I think there was talk of maybe just killing me too. Someone was like, oh, well, maybe he's dead. No, I'm serious. And okay. Then someone's like, you can't kill Buzz. You can't kill him. And no. So, you know, I hope that everyone in the writers' room is like, don't kill Buzz. But you know, maybe they were like, oh, I'm going with Buzz. Maybe he's not. That's, so maybe Buzz so, yeah, is dead. Maybe he's, dead. maybe he's you know. And then they were like, well, it's not really that kind of show. Like. Do we kill Buzz? That seems kind of harsh, right? We, we kill the bad guys, but can Buzz die? Buzz so is the purest, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm like the Mormon. You don't kill the Mormon. <laughs> and uh, so then they wrote in the whole like scene with the eyebrow, like, oh, I find a fine feel, right? We're, we, and we yeah. shot that like two <laughs> months later. Scene. Like we, we were shooting a different episode. And then I got a call like, hey, we got to go back and shoot this scene because it's like, it feels weird. It feels like you're dead. Yeah. And it doesn't really you know, seem to work. So we've written this little tiny teaser scene to throw in at the end of that episode. So, um, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that like that, that happens, right? Like at one point at the end of season two or three, there was a, a web series for Buzz McNabb that was going to go. And, um, I yeah, read so I had the spinoff thing. Yeah. I, it, and then I, like they had something and then they lost funding and then it, it never happened. So like they were going to do some sort of like ancillary content to drive viewers to psych and they thought mm-hmm. well the stage could you know do this web series and the other guys wouldn't be in it but it would be like psych based and in the world and kind of behind the scenes and um uh but i think the funding fell through and it, it didn't happen so uh I, yeah i would business. yeah i would not be opposed to a full-on spinoff of buzz mcnab as a detective oh, i'm just saying oh well, tell me you well, know tell me can i can i pitch that <laughs> Can I pitch that to a network somehow? Oh, like, yeah, please, we... do, please do, please do. <laughs> I mean, I would be all in on that. We would like to actually see his wife. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. You know. So, well, real quick, the eyebrow, did they shave it or was that just like... Press that. Did, that did you have one makeup. eyebrow for a while? Oh, okay. No, I was, it was like... Just, it was, it was uh, silicone and um, oh, okay. I think we mostly silicone and something else that they put on there. But, that uh, scene though was yeah. perfection because like you've been blown up, you're like on crutches, and yeah. Sean is you're dehydrated, and you're like, "Let me get you some water." <laughs> yeah. like, I just love how sweet Buzz McNabb is. It's mm. uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he's very Canadian, um, you know. He's yeah. very Canadian. <laughs> yes. Actually, while Franzi's already up, I did have a question. Uh, so in the end of Psych Two, uh, whenever we get to see you as a detective, uh, you do mention to Juliet that. Uh, Franzi does horse yoga. Do you, we've heard several things about her throughout the show, but we never see her. Do, is there any like fun facts about why we don't see her? Like, was there some weird thing preventing a character, or was she just too small of a character they didn't care about it? Like, what's the or or yeah. backstory that they told you or anything? They no, no, nobody ever told me anything, and I was like pushing for a few of my friends to play Francie. Um, it should Francie appear. So that was the line. So that horse yoga line, like there'd be episodes where you'd be doing a scene. And then uh, if it's an Andy Berman episode, then he'd be like ripping out lines from behind the monitor. Like, ah, say this, say this. And you, you know, you just say like nine different versions of random things. And then James would do it and Dulé would do it or Steve Franks would do it. And so I must've said like seven or eight different alts for that. And, um, and I guess that the horse yoga is the one that made it. And, uh, but they'll just kind of go in different directions and see what's funny. And then in the editing room, they'll try it around. And, and which is one of the, the joys, I think, of the show was um, that kind of spontaneity and that freedom. Because mm-hmm. then you could also, mm-hmm. if, if I had some crazy idea, I could do that as well. And they were, they were open to it. So it's, uh, 
the creative mosh pit, if you will. That is that that is one of the things that I think really made it fun to work on the show. And I think when we are having fun, it's more fun to watch. Yeah. Well, I uh, that's something that I've always loved about the show. Is there are very very few shows that you watch where you genuinely feel like they are having so much fun doing what they're doing mm -hmm. and that there's such good chemistry between everybody on there that it's like, it makes it more joyful to watch mm -hmm. and yeah. you get something more out of it when, when that comes through. So um, it brings me though to a question you kind of touched on it a minute ago, but I'm particularly curious about the physical comedy and because I know, um, you know, from, I don't know personally, but, you know, I've read that there's a lot that is involved in shooting things like this in terms of blocking and lighting and that sort of thing. So how much of the physical comedy um, or the, the, the stuff that James would do on the set was if you were looking at a script and on the page, what was there for him? Like, like. I'm thinking there was an episode in particular where he's trying to explain something to Gus there in the psych office and he just jumps up on the chair and like acts like, acts like he's surfing on the chair and he, he just is he, very physical in his in his comedy. And I don't know how much of that was on the page or just him. Almost all of it is is the people in that moment. It might say something. um because, you know, in the, the latter years, James was also writing a lot of episodes or he was in the writer's mm -hmm. room. So that he so that that in, mm -hmm. if he had an intention, then it might be written in the script. But and it might say the character jumps up and surfs the table, possibly. Um, mm -hmm. But in the. Most of the time, it's actor related or something that the director mm -hmm. or someone else on set thought would be kind of cool and, and funny, but most of the time it would be James that would have that idea. And, you know, it, it might just say, you know, Gus convinces Sean or Sean convinces Gus, uh, you know, da, 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 you know, throwing mm -hmm. his arms wildly or something like that. But, and, and they might do it four or five totally different ways on the day on set. And then you just don't know which one they're going to use. Cause it's, that's the fun of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I tried. guess the great part about that is as the viewer, not knowing uh, all it, some sometimes it's nice, like when you're watching it and you think oh, that was just brilliant. Like that was so perfectly done. Or like a Sean, like, and a you're not, like it's, it's so in yes. character that yeah, like somebody else writing it almost seems weird. Like, it, like it's something that he had to come up with on the fly, it feels like, but. And you can't imagine that it had to be done several times. Like it couldn't have been more perfect. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we've yeah, tried finding scripts online and stuff to try and like watch it with the script and see if it changes. But like all we can find are like transcribes, like where they just come mm -hmm. right down in the episode. So it, yeah. it's been a task. <laughs> but yeah. we're definitely interested in that behind the scenes stuff like that. There's been a few things that are weird that I you probably won't know the answer to that we, we won't go into but yeah that's stuff we love i probably won't know the answer but you can ask me any questions well it was I, one I thing that stood out it was in like episode i think it was episode three or four um it's the only time we've ever seen gus in a t-shirt <laughs> we don't know why ever. he's always in like a dress shirt or a polo and this one episode he was in this like pink t-shirt and we don't know if that was like, were they just trying something for the character? Cause it was in episode like four or five, I think, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, the, like there's a couple of questions like that mm -hmm. that are like very specific and maybe like he spilled something on your shirt that day. He just put on a t-shirt or I don't know how specific. Wardrobe but it was is. early. It was episode three. You're saying. And yeah. I mean, it didn't happen. Yeah. Any three, yeah, three or four. yeah, I, yeah, I don't I, recall I, it. I, Mm -hmm. I would I assume, and I, I really don't know the answer, but my assumption would be that, uh, yeah, in the beginning, you're going to try out a, a bunch of different things, and then you see what sticks. And then if he's always in dress shoots, dress shirts uh, thereafter, then the, because um, someone has to be the straight man, and someone mm -hmm. has to be the, the crazy person, right? And then, yeah, you know, and there's a, the, like, you know, the riffing goes on where they're both a couple of children, but initially Gus is the straight man and Sean's the, the wild one. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's, then you want the wild one to dress more like a child and the straight man to dress more like an adult. And so, you know, Gus is trying to do his regular career, you know, trying to be all mm -hmm. proper 
Um, so if you have Gus in these vibrant colors normally, then it doesn't give that archetype as much of a distinction. So I would guess that mm -hmm. they probably thought, nah, let's keep this guy in dress shirts and let's mm -hmm. have him Sean more in the bright colors and t-shirts and whatnot. And then, and then when then they're incognito for whatever they're trying to solve, then they can go full blown into whatever Hawaiian t-shirts or Santa Claus outfits mm -hmm. or whatever they're going to wear. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. It was episode four. Cause it was the one uh, that we weren't a big fan of in episode four, but it was the one right before your episode nine lives. Your first oh, like, yeah. uh, like main big one. character. Yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, we loved that episode. That was a good I episode. episode. I like that episode. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, okay. I saw I, when I was reading that out of 120 episodes, you were only in 57. And I have to tell you, that number really surprised me. Like, it felt like you were in so many more episodes of the show. Yeah. It was, it really surprised me. Yeah. I, I thought it was like more like 60, but that's what someone said online. I, yeah. um, I really have no idea. I, uh, you know, I probably... I, well, well, just so you know, like the the presence of your character oh. just always like felt like it was there more. I, mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, he's he's part of the force, yeah. right? Bugs, yeah. he's part of the force. Yeah. 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 Um. Now, out of curiosity, I I, I want to assume, but uh, do you what? Did you ever watch the show? I, I know being a part of it, it might make it weird to like it might like lose the magic like watching it and seeing how it's made and everything but did, I, did you ever I did. watch it yeah i um well i'll come clean i've maybe seen five episodes okay, okay. i, I yeah. assumed yeah. i i've Fair. seen a lot of actors talk about it like they they can't see the show like the mm -hmm. game of thrones people talk about it how they don't get to enjoy it how we get to and like i get that so i, I was curious if uh if that I, was i've seen bits from dip i generally i don't watch my own work because all i see is what's missing mm -hmm. like what i didn't do and i wish i would have done that and uh, i was kind of self-conscious in that moment or, or whatever mm -hmm. um and um i've seen a few episodes that i remember thinking this is a good episode and i was like wanted to see how it came together and then i've seen a few mm -hmm. episodes that were not a nightmare but pretty rough filming and like things didn't go well and i remember i was like i gotta see what this and it was terrible like that i'm not going to talk about this episode but it was like just the timing nothing worked it was okay but i was like this could have been a really funny episode but it just wasn't executed well and so uh so i've seen a few of those and um and then i've seen some like bloopers and stuff mm -hmm. but uh yeah that's all right, I don't think that's well, anything it, abnormal. I I wouldn't worry yeah, about it. That's no. yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. I I don't listen to you know my own podcast aside from mm -hmm. editing, so yeah. I I completely yeah. get it. <laughs> I just yeah. wanted to be sure before we ask questions that maybe you're like specific like that. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we talked kind of about how the cast sort of had like this magical thing and this, you know, great chemistry and got along really well. Do you see them at all or talk to them frequently? Like, um, I mean, does everybody Canada, still connect? So that might be a little more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm up here and, uh, and I'm the only Vancouverite that was on the show. Everyone else is a uh, Los okay. Angelite and, or Los Angelesian. What is that? I'm not sure how you say it, but you're familiar. <laughs> I've heard it both ways. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> okay, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, that was a little psych strategy. You got there. Yeah, well yeah, done, well done, well done. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I mean, when I when I used to go to L.A. here and there to hang out, I would sometimes grab lunch with maybe one of the directors or writers or uh, mm -hmm. Maggie and I bumped into each other a couple times and. Uh, and I talk to them, and I still talk to Tim pretty regularly. Um, but uh, no, I don't see them that often. I mean, I see once in a blue moon, I jump bump into James because he films a million little things here in Vancouver, and uh, yeah, um, I've seen him on that show. Um, but it's like seeing family members when we shot the movie. It's it's literally like, oh my gosh, how are you? What's going on? Where are you? This? Yeah. How's your dog? You know, all those, all those things. So it's, uh, and I think they keep in touch. And I mean, you know, like James and, and Maggie were like friends and then they were in a relationship for a long time and now they're friends again. Mm -hmm. And so 
but they're all still pretty tight and yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Very cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, uh, so I kind of feel like we, it, it sounds like you're, you're a part of it, but uh, the other cast members, like during the, uh, the snippets for the movies and stuff say that they are on board. As long as the fans want movies still, they're on mm-hmm. board making them. Yeah, it, it's yeah. What about oh, you? Yeah. Is is McNabb oh. in for the rest of the? Uh... Yeah, he's in, man. He, it's, I mean, for me, it's not a huge commitment. I'm in there for a couple of days, being bada boom, and mm-hmm. and I have fun, and uh, it's just hilarious to see everybody again. And um, the, well, the industry is not something that I would always call like the most inclusive industry, and um, but Psych is quite inclusive in in regards to. You know, because Tim Momensen had a a stroke a few years ago, and then they found a way to include him in. I love that. You know, in these movies, and um, so I uh, I got to work with him this time round on a movie, and I just thought it was so wonderful. You know Mm -hmm. how Mm -hmm. everyone was with Tim and how much he was committed to being a part of it, and uh, and I thought this is great. Like this is like people who care about it each other and, and want to work together and, and make cool, fun, funny stuff together. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, for sure. I'm in. And, uh, and I, I have a feeling, I mean, I think this next one will be on the Peacock network. I think that's where psych is, is moving to, I guess they bounce around mm-hmm. in the, you know, the virtual digital space, but I think Peacock now is the new home. So, um, I guess it probably is in the fans' court. It probably depends on the ratings, as they yeah. say. Oh well, I'm sure they'll be good. Well, we um, talk about it anytime new news comes out, so we're we're doing our part. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. yeah, nice. We're we're trying to get it out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a specific question, uh, but you do you know still talk with him. But Lassiter, Lassiter's character has a love for firearms. Yeah. Do in you show, yeah. know if Timothy Omenson um, has any firearms training, or was this just something totally on the show? Like, has, did he train for did it? Did he pick or? a hobby up from his character? Like, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't know the answer to that question, but I like. I know he definitely has training, and I know he's played a lot of cops and FBI mm-hmm. agents in his career. Like, I think he had a, mm-hmm. a bit part in one of the early Mission Impossible's and all sorts of stuff. So he's been around guns a lot as an actor. Mm-hmm. I feel, and I'm really speaking out of turn here, but I feel like Tim would be a guy that would probably not be someone that would carry a bunch of guns at home and wouldn't be someone that would be, you know, big supporter of like, I have my gun, I need to have 12 guns at home and all that right. stuff. But um, uh, but he's a consummate professional. So anything that needed to be shot on site, he definitely would have gotten whatever training was necessary for that. And um, And that was definitely a funny through line, I think, on the show was, you know, Mm-hmm. him and his obsession with guns. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was a good joke. Was, like, like he had that yes. piece of art in his uh building or in all of his houses that had like the gun with the flower coming out of it and it was on like the wedding stuff too. Like yeah, I just that was a big yeah. part of his character, you know, mm-hmm. with yeah. his proficiencies. And then the wedding, you know, when the wedding got crashed and there was all the shooting that went on. Well, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um so another thing, so they gave, as you mentioned before, the this character of McNabb started out as like not even like a full time character, and then mm-hmm. people loved him, and he got an episode, and they built him mm-hmm. out and built him out, and in the end, in the last episode, he got like a finish to his character arc where he became a detective. Mm-hmm. Um, for you getting to do that, was that a really cool moment? Did, like, did you have any like thoughts or feelings about them, like? you know, including that in the last episode, give letting him be a detective, how they did it. I know I I I, I think I probably shed a tear because I wasn't expecting it. And I was like, oh, he comes in and then you come in and you you look so like nervous but happy. And then when Lassie mm-hmm. gives you like, you know, he's like, I approve thumbs it. Up. He gives you the thumbs up and you get this big smile. Oh I, I love it was such a great moment for me. I <laughs> I loved it so much. Mm. Uh, were you happy with the way that that ended for your character? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. It uh, it did feel a little surreal because it felt like 
how many years can this guy be not a detective? And I thought, like, <laughs> oh, finally, it's happening, <laughs> finally. And and I kept on thinking, like, when are we going to meet Francie? I kept on thinking that, that, that Francie was going to yeah. be a part of the equation. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. uh, and I, I mean, I guess there's a part of me that's, you know, because I'm a natural cynic, and I'm like, how good of a detective is Buzz going to be? Like, he's so gullible. <laughs> He's so, you know, he's like great. so going along. Like, is he going to really notice what's happening? Is he like, is Buzz just going to get the wolves over mm-hmm. his eyes all the time? Or, because, uh, you know, I know we're in psych land, but. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, but no, but your great. partner yeah. was going to balance you a little bit. Yeah, was gonna she was going to teach balance. you. Because, yeah, she came yeah. in yeah. at the end yeah. and she was super sharp. Mm-hmm. Although I did just think yeah. it would be great if in one of the following movies we did get to meet Franzi and it was like Beyonce or some like supermodel that was oh playing her <laughs> and everybody is just like that's How your wife? Get her? How did you... that, that would be that awesome. That would actually be great if it was uh-huh. some crazy heavy hitter or some person that you're like this is Francie? Like what? Yep. I'm awesome. telling you, we we are ready to pitch this for yeah. you. Like, I like it. I like it. I'm like we we ready. can we need well, a whole series. So. Well, well, love to do it. I would love to see some sort of like a t- funny web series, like when you mentioned it before, take on like end of watch style, where you have like steady cam and you're at your desk and you're like, it's when you're like trying to be a cop, and yeah. then you're like, and Lasser calls you and you have to like get up and walk away, and then the camera's just sitting there, and then it cuts to a different scene. Like I think, yeah, that that web series actually was a really good idea. I think it would have been great for fans. Mm. Oh, for sure, and it would have, um, yeah, I think given them an opportunity probably to do all sorts of little bits that could be playing mm-hmm. into behind the scenes stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It's cool when shows do that when they build out like their world with other little pieces of of content and stuff. So, yeah, um, you never know. Fans never love know. it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite memory from the show? Not necessarily an episode, um, either like something during filming or maybe just an interaction with another cast member, something that stands out to you as a favorite? Good question. Um, I mean, for me, I guess when I think of the show, I, I think of like a series of relationships that got developed and Mm -hmm. interactions that i had with you know maybe steve franks on like the pilot and then a cool interaction we had when i was wearing like this crazy santa claus costume and it was like a hundred degrees outside and we're shooting the first or the second movie i think it was probably the second one and um so the warm fuzzies for me is is more just kind of feeling that there's this familial sense of um Mm -hmm. of knowing these people for this real duration and because in my life i had some real highs and lows during those eight seasons and um and i felt like my life was not going well for a good three or four and i thought oh they could let me go and they didn't let me go like they kept me on the show so Mm -hmm. i i felt like uh indebted to the show for that loyalty and um and for just allowing me to continue to be a, a part of it so really grateful for that um and uh i mean my favorite episode is for sure nine lives because i got the most stuff to do mm-hmm. i like doing stuff um yeah. and uh and there was some hilarious i don't even know when it was but we had this hilarious scene where we were all running and chasing a convict uh through the streets and jumping over things and i think lasseter mm-hmm. sprained his ankle when we were filming that day and uh, my friend Trevor oh, wow. Addy, who's a stuntman, did a leapfrog over a whole car. He then went on to be oh, like wow. a stuntman on Game of Thrones and be like a, a big deal in the stunt world. But this is in the beginning of his mm-hmm. career. And he like did this weird leapfrog over a car. We shot it in White Rock, which is like the streets of Santa Barbara. And it was probably season one or season two. But that was really fun. And I mean, I never really had a bad experience on the show which is, is quite rare. And um, as a Vancouver actor, where most of the time my career, in my career, I would show up for a day or two or three days to do 60 episodes and maybe 300 days on the show total or whatever it is. It was a really unique experience. So, so the, um, 
yeah, I guess my memories is, is like the sum totality of all of those things coming okay. together. Um, I hope great. that's a decent answer. No, that, that's, no, that's, that's a yeah. great answer. That's, that's great. Yeah. yeah, well, because your answer there just lets everybody know what the feeling was there and like yeah great answer i mean it's it's great a different answer. way but i mean the show i know for me just it it's it's always a good mood no matter what happens mm -hmm. i can mm -hmm. put on psych and just listen to it in the background while i'm doing stuff or i can watch it listen to it sleeping and it just changes my mood it brings me to like mm -hmm. i guess that state that i was in when i first found it you know when i was like 15 16 years old and you know whatever it is i can just you know, it, it means a lot to me too and uh for different reasons, obviously, but uh, yeah, it's it's just a good mood. It's a it's a great show, mm -hmm. good spirit. So I love that. You can't be upset watching Psych mm -hmm. ever. Um, I know we're we're keeping can... you. We we only have a few questions left. If that's yeah. okay, okay, only a couple yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about the upcoming third movie? Without getting this in any best. trouble. <laughs> right. <laughs> I Anything? can't tell you that much. I mean, there's a crime that's going to get solved. <laughs> you know, okay. we, we spend some time in Santa Barbara. Some other people are spending some time in another city. Okay. Mostly, oh, okay. You know? okay. So okay. most of it is most of it's in Santa Barbara. I can't really tell you. Okay. That, that's fine. That's fine. No, no, no. That's yeah. okay. That's good. We, we kind of like, <laughs> the people yeah, that you are excited to that. see. Most of those people. Mm -hmm. Pretty well, all of those people are there. Okay, yeah. that's good. Awesome. That's good. Um, did and and I'm sure you had a you know good experience filming it because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like yeah. Um, and then you touched. We were going to ask you about Tim um, Omenson and how it was working with him again oh. in this movie. Yeah, great. And such yeah. a, I mean, Tim is like such a first class actor. Like he. Mm -hmm. He was the actor that, um, because he remembered being kind of a journeyman actor like myself and showing up on a TV show and maybe you're only there for one or two days. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's the experience of like arriving and meeting 40 people that all know each other and you you're getting introduced to all their names and you can only retain three or four of them. And then, uh, and then having like this high pressure job of like, okay, now I got to go in and do the scene and I got to say my lines and try to get it right. And, mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and how that can be really kind of an alienating experience for an actor. And um, so Tim was the guy that would always go up to any guest star actor, even if they, they had you know one line on the show or 50 lines, mm -hmm. they were going to be there for two hours or two weeks. And he'd say, hey, man, how's it going? I'm Tim. You know, welcome to the show and make sure they had a chair and show them around everything. And, and so he was the king of, of, you know, making people feel welcome. Um, which is also like a great way to just make sure that people have like do great work because the more welcome you feel and the more the grounded you become. And um, so he was like an anchor point for psych. And, uh, and then here we are in this different circumstance and, um, and they were like, we're going to include Tim. We're going to find a way to include Tim. And, and he was still more than ever committed to, you know, working on the show and doing great work and including other people. And, um, and Tim and I have a scene where there's a bunch of extras there and there's photographers and this and that. And it was, so it was fun to be a part of this big kind of spectacle scene that was um, like for COVID, it was a lot of people. Remember, you know, maybe yeah. pre COVID there would have been four times as many extras, but for COVID mm -hmm. it was quite a bit, right? Cause it's, yeah. it's a different when you're making a movie during COVID because everyone's got their masks on, you're going around and then, and then mm -hmm. like, okay, masks off. And then everyone, but one person takes their masks off. And then they're like, you know, in the blue shirt, you forgot to take your mask. Because <laughs> you know I mean? it's a thing, right? You have to orchestrate all this stuff mm -hmm. and everyone's getting tested every two or three days. Like, it's a thing making a, a show during COVID. So I didn't think it was happening. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I got the call and and uh, it was great. It was really remarkable. And um, yeah, a lot of fun. Well, we're glad that he's done so much rehabilitation and mm -hmm. is just doing yeah. well. Um, Kicking butt. So yeah. 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 Now, uh, yeah, Tim and yourself were actually both on Supernatural. Um, we have mm -hmm. some. Not, we do have a few non-psych related questions that we were just curious about okay. as well as a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I know he had a, a, a part in Supernatural, and so did you. You got to play one of the mm -hmm. fallen angels. Um, actually, I don't even know what year that came out, but it was towards the end, one of the later ones. 
Um, mm-hmm. Did you? I mean, how was that? I, I don't know how long you were filming, you know, for your for that episode, but um, I don't know. You got to work directly with Misha Collins, uh, Castiel, in there, and I mean, yeah. he seems like a really nice guy. Um, as, He's really you have a good experience with that. Guy. Yeah, great experience. He's super fun to work with and easygoing, and you know. You kind of muck up. I remember in the middle of a take, we were like up and close to each other, and my phone started vibrating. On it, but like my leg was against his leg, and I was looking at him and like, does he feel the vibration? Does he feel? Because I shut up on my phone, like I had it on silent, and I was like, and I'm saying my lines, and I'm talking to him, and after the take, I was like, look, man, I'm so sorry about the phone. He's like, oh, I was wondering what that little tickle was. He's a great guy, though. He's great. Yeah, yeah. I didn't work with Tim on the show, but I remember bumping into Tim because I was doing some stand-in work on the show like a season later just to pay pay the bills and tim was working on it and he was having a blast on it mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah, yeah. He, he probably was having a blast there's a lot of activity in his role uh, yeah he was king yeah there. so yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah that's really cool so okay so you've also been in some things that i really love um okay. <laughs> well gaston and once upon oh, a time oh yeah 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 so good yeah. So good. Um, you got turned into a rose. That's pretty, you know. Uh, pretty yes. cool. mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and but the Hallmark movies. This, oh, the small marks. I, Hallmark's I love marks. them. I love the Hallmarks. A woman I, goes to a town that she grew up in, but she's living yeah. in the city. But now she goes back to this town because she has a quest <laughs> that she must fulfill that could involve her grandmother, who's no longer around. And when she's in this town, there's going to be a man who's kind of annoying her, her, but maybe from her past or maybe not, but he kind of annoys her in this country bumpkin way. But maybe (laughs) this man is better than her attorney or lawyer or ad agency husband-to-be in the city. And maybe she should really go back to her country bumpkin living. He gets that it. That kind of describes about eighty percent of those movies, doesn't it? It does. You, it does. You're you, a very smart man. You're a very smart man. See, you just, you just, in like that brief time, said everything Matthew has ever uh, thought about those movies. Yeah. Um, I, I love them. Yeah, people. Everybody loves them. They're great. I love They're feel good. Heartfelt. Yeah, absolutely. They're totally inaccurate for life. Uh-huh. They're not, like the problem. The problem with them is that you think like this is what life should be. I should meet someone and we should just fall in love. And in, all in of like, like two weeks. the basic things about life, like doing the dishes and childcare and, you know, mm-hmm. all like paying rent, like those don't matter. No, it's right. this love, love. And right. I, I wish life was a Hallmark movie, <laughs> but they are hilarious. Oh, do they're... I? That's what yeah. I love about them and the Christmas movies in particular. So, mm-hmm. A Bride for Christmas. Oh, God. That, I love making that movie. And you were I'm Mike. Gonna... And yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. Yes. It was perfect. <laughs> Love that movie. And mm-hmm. I know that Maggie Lawson also does some of these movies. She's done yeah. several. Mm-hmm. I think we need a pairing here. Oh, I yeah. think we need a pairing. You see, I feel like I need to pitch these things for you everywhere because I really think that needs to happen. You yeah, two so together. Then, like, if I was in a movie with Maggie, I would be like the best friend of the guy she's going to marry maybe or something like that or no, I would be... no you would be the guy from the past that she goes back you guys <laughs> the need country to be bumpkin, the yeah this movie. i'm the country I, i'm gonna be the love interest for maggie yes maggie lawson i don't yeah. see that no, i i, I see it i don't i could be the guy I who's like it. starts out that is gonna get married to her and then you find out that he's cheating on her i could be that guy <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm not the guy. I'm never the guy in the, oh, in the Hallmark. You I'm need the guy to be that, the guy. <laughs> no, I mean, I'd like to be the guy, but I'm not the guy. Like, wh- whenever I, I tell people, they say, like, I say, yeah, I do Hallmark. And they say, yeah, I'm like, you know the guy who gets the girl in the Hallmark movie? And they say, yeah, I say, I'm not the guy. <laughs> I'm, like, the best friend of that guy. I'm the guy that, like, starts with her, and she, like, goes up to the aisle and keeps on walking. I'm, like, the plumber. I'm the the carpenter. I'm the electrician. I'm you know I'm the other guy. I'm not that guy. You need to be that guy. I <laughs> I, I believe know, it in my heart. I'd like to be that guy, but I don't think I'm that guy. No. And and even Darrow and Darrow. I mean, I know that's like an ongoing. Oh thing, yeah. So do we have any more of those? I don't know. I don't know if they'll have me back on that as the detective. Those are pretty fast. Those are like shotgun movie making. You make the movie really? so fast. 
Wow. Yeah, the, the, the fastest one I ever did, I don't know if it was Hallmark or Lifetime, was this guy, John Urshenbomber, mm-hmm. shot this movie. And we shot 11 pages of scenes in three hours. Oh it was God. like, just like, ah, Okay, it, so put that in perspective. Like, how many pages would you normally you shoot? You do like a page an hour, maybe. Okay. A page an hour, and you might do seven pages a day. On a big okay. movie, like a Spielberg, you might do two pages a day, one page a day. Um, okay. On Spike, you do seven or eight, maybe on a big day, 10 or 11, on the day. But we shot it all, like, in, like, two or three hours, just like, well, right. I mean, so, there was yeah. also look, the Irresistible Blueberry Farm. These are all movies I've loved. I've just, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hap, you were Hap in that one. I, I right. just yeah. really, wow, yeah. You've seen a lot of Hallmark. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They have marathons can, I, like that, that just that play, and she'll just sit down and watch them. <laughs> Well, yeah. I like I like to keep them on, like when other things are going on, or like I play one to go to sleep at night, that sort of thing, because they're just happy. They're Love filler. Them. They're Love. like background filler to keep you in a good mood, right? Yeah, that's they're... what people seem to to like yeah. them for. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and I think they serve a function. They're they're great, yeah. and and they have um totally stimulated the the Vancouver film industry uh, because they hire a lot of local actors. They usually only have like a couple mm-hmm. of big American names come up and then everyone else is, is from Vancouver. And so they're, they're a wonderful thing for the, uh, you know, the mm-hmm. commerce, the, the business of the show yeah. business in, in, in Vancouver. And uh, I'm not doing them right now. I'm on a little break from Hallmark because I've got, uh, I got a business I launched a few years ago in the real mm-hmm. estate stuff. And so that's kind of my prime focus. But at some point I'll return to the land of Hallmark. Please and do. Maybe I'll Please be the do. guy. Probably not. I'll be the other guy. But maybe. Well, you know, I feel like if you tell them that I said you should be the guy, that might carry some weight. That's it. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. well, no, that does it. Barbara mm-hmm. from Virginia, yeah. Virginia Beach, yeah. right? Virginia yes. Beach. Yes. She says, it's my turn to be the guy. Yeah. That's right. Because you know what? I'm a fan of those movies, and I know what we want to see. But, um, okay. So, I my think last, that was I have one last question. Last... Oh, you have it's, one it's more? One. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. A long time ago, in 2006, you had a role mm-hmm. on Stargate SG-1. I don't know if you remember this, because I know you've been in... I remember. I remember. Yeah. Did you buy any... I'm a huge fan of Stargate. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Did you buy any chance to go get to like see the stargate like the gate room i don't know if i don't know exactly how that's no. all set up no because i was shooting at um the gate room was at the studios i did see it another time i walked by where it was uh i think the gate room was at bridge studios uh but not when i was filming i remember like i was on the on the lot and i saw the big gate i was shooting out at the um uh what's it called there's an old like an insane asylum Oh, okay. It was a big river. Riverview, it's called. It's like a like a you know defunct government insane asylum uh, that uh, that has all these creepy buildings and is like infamous for being haunted. And all this crazy stuff has happened there in the last thirty or forty years, <laughs> and is a infamous location for filming. And it was Ernie Hudson, and then John. I forget what John's name is, but he was on ER at the time, and. And I was the the local guy on the on the bridge of the little thing, and um, and nobody could remember the lines, <laughs> myself included. And like I'm, wow. I should be the guy who remembers my lines because I'm like the local hire that's not actually anyone. I'm just showing up and you know, journeyman actor. I should know my lines, but I just met a girl and I'd flown her into town for a romance, and then this gig came through and I was like. <laughs> involved in the romance mm-hmm. and then i had to go to set every day and there was all of this like you know intergalactic blah 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 whatever you're saying mm-hmm. and i remember that ernie hudson and john were like they'd start talking and they'd be like hey space show what's my line what do I-? <laughs> and they're all like and so then it would like it became like they would say it and then i started saying no oh, i'm talking space show. but then the director would look at me like hey look kid you're the guy you got a load no these guys are stars they can get away with it you know your lines <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know and i'm sitting on the bridge trying to get through the thing and because i'd had like three or four auditions for the show and uh i don't know if peter de directed that episode but i'd auditioned for him several times and i'd been in the room and had gotten the lines wrong they're like it's, everybody gets them wrong because they're they, they don't mean anything to you so you have to spend more time memorizing them and actors are notoriously lazy <laughs> and so we wait till the last minute to try to cram the lines in and then it's all this crazy jargon where you just don't know the vertical comparator operator is not operating at top <laughs> speed you're like what am i saying so, um, 
yeah, that's a long-winded answer to your question, but it was fun. Oh, no, I had that, fun shooting that show. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I love that stuff. So, yeah, I love Stargate. Mm-hmm. Is one of those another one of those big ones that uh, I've seen over and over again since I was you know growing up. So, mm-hmm. mm. so mm-hmm. is there anything that you're currently working on that you or like that is going to be coming out soon that you wanted to let listeners know about or anything? Like shout out any um, projects, anything like that. Well, yeah. I mean, I uh, I have an idea for a show that I have done nothing about, but I'll plant the seed in space. Okay. Uh, that is a, uh, cause I've been, I've been doing this hustle to make a buck in, in Vancouver where I'm, uh, I'm renting houses that are getting torn down mm-hmm. Yeah, we've, and I'm yeah. doing a quick cosmetic reno and then I'm subleasing them out. And so I have oh, cool. all of these hilarious characters that work with me and, um, uh, people from, you know, I have these Irish warriors, like all the, the Waterloo warriors that were my tenants and have been working with me for the last year and a half. And then I have Irina, the Russian cleaner, and then Kev Kev, this flamboyantly gay painter who Kev Kev makes it pretty. And so I have this crazy world that I occupy. And then there's the developers that own the property. And then there's the tenants that move into the property and then all of the stuff that goes along. And um, so I'm interested in doing a story about landlord life because there's not a lot of stories or characters, landlords that we follow yeah. around and, um, and all of the stuff that ensues in that, that would be kind of mm-hmm. similar to the Lance Wonderbuck character. I had this, this, uh, That's web what series I thought you were going to bring up right. first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it's kind of like that character is in the world of being a landlord. And, um, so I think I want to explore that at some point mm-hmm. and then, um, I'm also excited about maybe writing a one man play and performing that oh, live yeah. at, at oh, some point. Very um, cool. So, so I uh, thank you for the nod because, because now I've said something and that'll hold me accountable to maybe do something uh-huh. in the future. Yeah. So there thank you. you. For yeah. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. That was our last question. We, we just appreciate it so much. It was a blast for us. I yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, yeah it so was moved. really great. Yeah. We really appreciate really it. Great. Thank you for making the time for us. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, I know. Well, we well, here, we can do the outro first. Uh, yeah. Um, so yes, thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate it for answering all of our questions. I know we went a little bit longer than I think I anticipated, but questions popped up outside of our questions so yeah Mm -hmm. but yeah well and kudos Mm -hmm. to you guys for doing this for making it happen you you know because it um well like i would say to people in the mentorship program i think that the uh you know however many viewers and accolades you get is not what's relevant i think what's relevant is that you have a passion for something and you're fulfilling that passion and i think that um the act of doing it is the reward in itself. And that, you know, I hope you continue this for if your journey is that you will do 115, 120, 120, 120. Yeah. Then yeah. you must do it mm-hmm. and you must continue to reach mm-hmm. out to people that inspire you. And um, let me plant this seed in your, your ear is that uh, there are countless Vancouver actors that worked on psych for one episode or two episodes and you could reach out to them to talk, you know, people yeah. like Dan Payne or people like Ben Cotton or all of these, you know, uh, like my friend, Michelle Harrison, or just tons of people that you could reach out to that are, um, that did episodes that you, if you were wanting to talk about an episode, you could dig through and say, Oh, who was that actor that played that? That would probably be good guests for you and would be easy um, easier than getting like one of the lead actors in the show to be on the thing and would be um, mutually beneficial. They, they would enjoy it and it would probably be good yeah. content people for you. So kudos to That's you awesome. for creating yeah. it. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. It's something we're working on. Yeah. We enjoy doing it. it. It's work, but we still, we look forward mm-hmm. to it, to recording. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, we hoped you enjoyed the interview. Uh, we learned quite a bit in there. We got a lot of good answers behind the scenes stuff mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of new new things to think about about the show. So I hope well, you guys and, enjoyed it. Yeah, we definitely hope you enjoyed it. We And not only new things about the show, but also things just about him and about yeah. other things that he's done. And it was pretty educational. We got a lot of like inside scoop. I, I really enjoyed talking with him. What a genuinely just nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Uh, it was a, 
it was actually a fantastic first interview for us as well, doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, uh, yeah, we'll definitely try and talk to him again in the future down the road. You know, give it some time and uh, we'll do it a couple seasons from now. Yeah, or maybe you might, you know, we, we're hoping we'll do some interviews with some other cast members, whether it's supporting cast or uh, more more lead roles. We'll We'll see how it goes. But, you know, thanks for listening. We hope you really enjoyed it. Yep. See you next time.